Hello everyone and welcome back, I'm Simon bringing you more Magic the Gathering lore. As the dire battle for Zendikar's fate continues, we enter the plane's next chapter, Oath of the Gatewatch. In the previous video, we discovered that the former demon turned reignited planeswalker was responsible for both the release of Ulamog and the resurfacing of Kozilak, spelling the possible end for Zendikar. Nissa Ravain tried to exact her revenge on the powerful demon, but was flung into a distorted reality of pain and fear, completely removed from the fight. Yet, Zendikar still has heroes who are willing to defend it. First things first, stop up Nixilis. As Abi was reveling in his victory over the elf who dared to stand in his way, a thought permeated through his mind. It was time for him to leave Zendikar and never return. Of course, that's very sensible. Right after he ensured no survivors are left at Seagate, then he'd leave and never return. Actually, even that wasn't important right now, was it? He should just leave and never return. This was an interesting development for Obnixilis. It seemed that he had attracted a telepath. The demon didn't much care for telepaths. They put things in people's minds that didn't belong, something Obnixilis has had much experience with in the past. This meddling pest had to be dealt with. Unbeknownst to Obnixilis, Jace Belleron had witnessed everything, from the demon's interference of the Hedrons to his assault on Nyssa, and the Mind Mage wasn't ready to sit back and let his transgressions go unpunished. Jace may not be the most adept fighter, but he can hold his own in his own unique way. Jace's first plan was to simply cement the idea that Obnixilis should just leave Zendikar. That would take care of him immediately. But it failed as he saw the demon rushing towards his general direction. Time to change tactics. As his massive wings forced his large frame to the ground, blasting away and killing several Zendikari, Jay stood facing his newly ignited opponent. As a reflex, the Mind Mage split his body into numerous copies of himself. These mirrored images were a defensive jab at the demon, one that he found more annoying than deceiving. Obnixilis conjured a dark spell which spread out like a ripple in calm waters, striking each of the illusions and presumably the real Jace as well. The pain of the spell caused the fakes to topple over in agony, but only one truly felt it. The demon sensed the pain and focused on the target. He had found his intruding mind mage. Abi charged his foe, believing he could end his life with one solitary punch. But as their eyes met, Jace's gaze struck the demon like a lance. Jace pulled out all the stops, going for a full frontal assault on the demon's mind. It didn't kill him, but it sure distracted him. This meant that when Obnixilus landed his blow, he merely broke Jace's cheek rather than removing his entire head. The Mind Mage, the living gill pact of Ravnica, was soundly defeated. No amount of tricks or deception could save him now. Obnixilus stood over the bruised telepath, ready to end his life. But as heroes tend to do, Jace Balleron was rescued from certain death thanks to his friend, Gideon Jora. The demon felt something grab hold of his wings. As it pulled, he was flung back from his prey, ripping one of his wings in the process. Before him stood a tall, square-jawed, fully armored man. A planeswalker to be sure, but he also happened to be a true hero. Obnixilis was thoroughly annoyed at this point. Abi attempted to reason with this Gideon fellow. All he wanted to do was kill this insignificant telepath and be on his way. But, in true hero fashion, Gideon wanted to protect everyone all the time. Even everyone on Zendikar, if you could believe that. Gideon's Searle was quick, but the demon anticipated the attacks. I guess you garner quite a bit of experience and training when you've lived as long as he had. With each blow, Obnixilus found that he couldn't harm Gideon. He was protected by some kind of white magic, a shield that would instinctively cover vulnerable areas. Again, Abi grew more annoyed. Gideon had some good chops, although not having the same amount of experience as the demon, he made up for it in pure determination and will. They traded blow for blow, but a few miscalculations on Obnixilus' side found him trapped in a knee lock by Gideon. The demon was heavier, but Gideon had great balance and control allowing him to bend and break the demon's knee at the joint. The pain was bad, but nothing compared to the suffering he had been through for thousands of years. The knee would heal, but the grapple left Gideon open for a counterattack. He used this second allotted to him and flipped Gideon on his back, 
Using his one good leg and his weight advantage, he pinned the heroic planeswalker. It was over. Obnixilis had taken control of the fight. Gideon used his magic to brace his shoulder, keeping it from breaking, but it was truly done. As they splashed in the mud and blood, invulnerability proved no match for three inches of murky water. Obnixilis held Gideon's head below the mud for what felt like hours. As the moments passed, Gideon's struggling lessened until nothing but a motionless corpse remained. Obnixilis flipped the planeswalker's body over and screamed in victory. This is Zendikar, and your fight is over. It seems all our heroes are either lost, dead, or immobilized. Jace is bleeding with a broken cheek, Shirley next on Obby's hit list, Kiura and her sea monsters have fallen to the depths, Nyssa is trapped in a twisted reality, and now Gideon appears to have been killed. But is he truly dead? While this story certainly leaves us to that conclusion, I doubt it's true. There's just so many cards that suggest he lives and fights on, mainly his Oath card. A dead man can't swear an oath. But really, I kinda hope one of our heroes do die, and it's not out of malice or anything like that, but rather interesting story developments. When a main character dies, it triggers reactions from others in the story, and this is especially true in MTG. Not to mention, it opens up the White Planeswalker spot for a new manifestation of this Planeswalker role, which could be cool. Regardless, I want to know your opinions. Do you think Gideon's truly dead? Would you like to see him die and perhaps replaced by another new Planeswalker? Let me know in the comments below. And that's going to do it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, consider giving it a like and sharing it with friends. It goes a long way in supporting future content. As always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.